this upcoming total solar eclipse in Aries is offering us the opportunity to move forward and massively transform ourselves. However, while we may be feeling the inertia to move forward, to accelerate and start taking action, Mercury's current retrograde in Aries is asking us to pause, to reflect, and to think things through before we take that final leap. Hey everyone, it's Christine. Welcome back to my channel and to this video on the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries happening on April 8th at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 19 degrees and 23 minutes of Aries. You all, this lunation is really about upgrading ourselves, hence the thumbnail. We are up leveling in many ways, but we're not going to be seeing the action or the inertia move forward in the way that we want, simply because this Aries season is a little bit different. We have Mars and Pisces, which rules over Aries, and we are also seeing Mercury currently in retrograde at this time. So while there is a stop and go movement, accelerating or at least feeling that acceleration to go forward, to take action, to start making those changes, we are at the same time being asked to wait a minute, pause and reflect. And you may already be seeing that in your reality with how things may be, <clears throat> excuse me, how things may be delayed, taking longer. You may be having difficulties already with some technology or communications, especially in your relationships. <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so many of the themes in this eclipse are related to the Libra Lunar Eclipse we just had on March 25th. So take a look at this video to get more information because a lot of what you've experienced in the opposite house in Libra, you'll be experiencing similar themes but on the other end with Aries. So a lot of the themes are very much interrelated. Timestamps are provided below, all times refer to Eastern Standard Time. Also, I always include the link to the moon in the description box below so you can take a look and see how it aligns to where you are currently at. Let's dive into this. Just a quick update here. I'm making this video very simple. I'm, I've been feeling very much under the weather and impacted by the energy of the eclipse. I'm even having trouble talking and that has been something that has happened within the last two weeks when Mercury shifted uh, retrograde. So keeping this simple and highlighting the transits within the discussion of the themes. So we have four major themes here. The first one focuses on massive self-transformation and healing. It goes without saying because of the reference to this eclipse in the sign of Aries. It's ruled by Mars. We are transforming ourselves collectively. The Sun, Moon, and Chiron are in a conjunction at 19 degrees with the North Node at 15 degrees as well, and all are opposing the South Node in Libra at 15 degrees. So we are releasing a lot at this time. We are shifting and transforming really, really quickly, and a lot of things are starting or will start to unfold when Mercury stations direct. We will start seeing and feeling more forward movement and shifting forward and seeing those things materialize in our personal lives faster. And I feel like most of April is going to be a lot of sitting with what's happening, what's going on, getting in tune with things that are popping up in terms of our own levels of awareness, practical wisdom and guidance, intuitive and psychic messages, and also thinking through well, what is happening? What is it that I'm going through? Almost like processing this because there's a lot of internal and inward energy at this time. Some Sub-themes related to this about self-transformation and healing. Point blank, we're releasing outdated and old beliefs, self-limiting patterns and identities right now. And this is causing a major shift in and of itself because as we are adopting new ways of being and existing, communicating and expression, and we are shedding ways that we used to exist, but we no longer identify with that, that's going to change the course of so many things, right? Imagine your identity as a child, as a teenager, maybe a college student, or a certain profession you did, or being the spouse or significant other of someone, or being the friend of so-and-so. Your identity, 
identities are constantly in flux and shifting, but because this eclipse it almost feels like a revolving door, especially with the lunar Aries axis where people are coming and going, energies and identities as well. We're also healing wounds and traumas regarding the self, who we are, how we express ourselves, and the changing identities. And it seems really easy when you think about it and you say it, identities are flowing, fluctuating, shifting, changing, transforming. But when you actually go through that process, there's a lot of grief involved, a lot of loss. And it can be very, very painful. And it's obviously very uh, transformative to undergo. But when you are releasing one state of being, whether it's how you identified in a career or in a certain title or even as a parent or in the profession or retired, whatever it is, there's a period of acclimating. It's really, it's a lot like moving, but it's on a deeper level because it touches your emotions as well. So there's major purging happening right now. I feel like many folks are packing their life suitcases. That's what I call basically all the trauma, wounding, and shit that we have amassed in this lifetime, throughout our life, from childhood until our present moment, and even past lives, things that may have been carried uh, with us. And I feel like a lot of this purging that has been happening, a lot of that relates to things from the past. So I want you to notice, or even just take stock and drop down below if any of this resonates and if you're going through this. Have old injuries flared up or resurfaced? Have you been feeling pain flare up in injuries you thought were healed a long time ago or maybe they were? Same thing that I've been seeing with old memories. Have memories been resurfacing from the past? Or even people or situations that have done you wrong? Have you started remembering things that are coming back? Or maybe even some of these folks came back in your lives. There's a lot of things that are resurfacing right now. Not so much to intellectualize, simply to feel them and to let go. That's, why, that's what I mean by purging. It's almost being expressed. Kind of like when you pee, you're purging urine out of your body. And it's a way of your body cleansing itself. Same way with all of this, an emotional purging is coming alongside this. So that means a lot of crying, a lot of tears with water, because we do have Mars and Pisces. We also have a lot of anger because of the stellium right now in Aries, but there's a lot of anger, anger for past injustices. It could be social injustices, but because of this obviously relates to the self and the area of life that Aries is activating for you, a lot of anger, frustration, hurt, pain, Perhaps guilt, shame, resentment coming up about how we wish we could have protected ourselves, how we wish we could have done things differently, and also aimed at others who may have hurt us. So a lot of these things are coming back, and we're not experiencing this just to experience pain and relive these moments. It's simply to feel that and to allow that energy to transgress and to go through our bodies, because a lot of the times what happens when we experience moments of trauma or pain, at that moment, we don't say we're going to heal and work through this while it's happening or while we're triggered. Generally, we don't. Either we may dissociate, we may excuse me, compartmentalize what's going on, or we may put a pause on it, if you will, and say, I'm going to have to come back to this later. I just don't have the capacity to deal with this right now. I need to keep living or rather surviving and doing what I need to do to get through this. And so a lot of stuff is coming back right now where we're being asked to feel it so it can be released and essentially expunged. So just think of anything that you've been feeling. Of course, please make sure that you connect with your doctor and rule out anything. So practice discernment and trust your intuition here. But you may be feeling a lot of different things through your body in the recent weeks with the start of eclipse season. And this is generally indicating a lot of energy moving through your body and where it you feel it will indicate some themes about what is coming up for you. And this is simply to allow all of this, these traumas, these fears, to move out. And this goes alongside any healing that you've been doing and continuously healing that is ongoing. So if any of you have been seeing or experiencing like pings, triggers, things that are reactivating certain wounds, 
some of this is coming up again for feeling it, but also to acknowledge and see it. It's not for pain. Comment down below. I'd be interested to know if any of you have been experiencing any of this. For me, I'll say for myself, not triggered, but I'm feeling a lot of purging of memories, memories from the past of pains of people that have hurt me and wounded me, especially in my family system, have been coming up a lot, almost like photographs floating through my essence and a lot of tears. And then it just goes. We're also dealing with issues, themes around rejection, abandonment, love and self-love, grief, loss, betrayal, being othered, marginalized, oppressed, and or different forms of abuse and much more. And these are just topics. I don't want to get into any of them. They're general. And you can think in terms of abuse, there's so many types of things you can label them, narcissistic abuse, emotional, verbal, etc. But there's so many different things that have happened and that you may be coming to some point of like reconciling this is what it is this is what i've experienced i've gotten to the root of this and you may have been working on this for quite a while healing this and also realizing how much you have healed because with the sun moon and chiron all conjunct one another there's an, a major element of acknowledging how far you've come in your own healing journey because we have had chiron transiting through Aries for the last several years now. I think it'll be seven by the time it exits. And a lot of this has to do with how we have been in many ways wounded for being who we are. And we were made to feel less than our identities, our forms of expression and showing up in our essence, and essentially, excuse me, who we are, we're wounded and that's where a lot of the emotions and feelings you could be feeling may be coming up. Almost like a warrior type of expression where you may be feeling that need to get it out, to scream, to yell. Going with this next point, our inner spiritual warriors, leaders, mavericks, pioneers, they're emerging, especially in the Aries area of your life. So pay attention. Wherever areas, Aries, excuse me, rules over, that's an area that's calling for you to do something different and to level up in your own way and emerge as a leader in this area, which may be different than what other people may have told you, may have guided you, may have said, you need to do it this way. Because in this area, you may be guided to do it a different way, to approach it in a completely innovative new way. Because that pioneering energy signifies that there may not be anyone else except you that can approach it in this way for you and your life. So you may not be able to find other people's footsteps and follow through and say, okay, I'm gonna follow it this way and it's gonna work for me. You may actually need to create and invent your own. Hence, perhaps why Mars is in uh, Pisces. I was gonna say Neptune, Pisces at this moment because you are getting your own messages and exploring those creative aspects, spiritual as well, in a different way than if Mars was in its domicile in Aries at this time. We're also embracing ways of doing things solo and new ways of leaning into independence, especially when it comes to relationships. We have different forms of relating and many folks have been working through a lot of perhaps unhealthy ways of relating, dysfunctional, toxic, or Whatever way that they were relating, it didn't feel good to them. And it could have obstructed their own identity, their own source of being and who they were. And sometimes in relationships, it could feel like when you are in a container with someone else, whether it's a platonic or a romantic connection, you may feel like you're subsumed, your identity is part of another, or there's an enmeshed or boundary issue. So a lot of things have been coming up around who am I, how do I exist in a relationship with others but while maintaining who i am and not losing that because that's an important key here there's themes around interdependence and synergy right now in relationships and of course if you are a youngster if you're a child there's a level of dependence that you may have on your caretakers which is generally normal same thing when you are in some part of union like a romantic partnership and you have a family or you're just you two or whomever is involved, 
there's usually some type of dependence on one another. But here, with this lunation, it's asking you to make sure, well, you're not just that container, that relationship is not just you. You also have your own identity separate from it. And there's a lot of emphasis here on defining that and not being afraid to step outside of what people may have said that you were or may have called you a certain something or may have put you in a certain box because the Aries archetype is not put in a box. You define it. Some other themes here include rising up with strength, grit, and determination, especially with challenges you've been experiencing. I don't know about you guys. I know I've mentioned this. I feel like 2024. <laughs> it just has felt like a whole completely energy than even 2023 and before in prior years. I feel like so many folks, nearly everyone I've connected to in my personal and professional network, they're going through some shit, something. And a lot of emphasis on leaning into faith, hope, God, source, energy, divine, all of that has been coming through. So we have been learning what is healthy for us and what is not, who is healthy for us and who is not, what needs to go. Healthy conflict resolution is also something that's eminent here. We're learning to navigate relationships, communications and snafu that arise, disagreements, conflicts in healthier ways. And you'll notice that, especially in relationships where you may have found that certain patterns or cycles have repeated, where you found yourself in the same place or in some type of impasse or stagnancy or stalemate, there's something here that this lunation and all of these alignments are telling us it's time to do things a little bit differently here. And that may mean responding differently, showing up in a different way, because we can't make anyone else change, only ourselves. So that leaves us with changing ourselves, right? And asking ourselves, well, what's happening here? Maybe I need to walk away. Maybe I need to release this. Maybe I need to speak up. And if that doesn't change, that's it. I just continue on. Because these this Aries energy ruled by Mars it doesn't wait. It's not like Saturn where it has patience. <laughs> Mars will keep going. And some of the lower expressions could be impatience and impulsiveness to do things quickly and say, see you later. Mars is also some, uh, someone or something archetypally of cutting out of dividing and separating too. We're learning assertiveness here with our voice and taking action in particular, learning to walk away not constantly staying in situations with people and trying to make things work. We're not diffusing our energy, if you will, and we're not constantly pressing that button and needing to be right in any way. There's a difference in how we're learning to be and exist and respond to other people, and more importantly, how to stand in our own power and truth and knowing, you know what, is this going to protect my inner peace, which is touching upon the harmony aspect of Libra, just the higher expressions we want to take right now. Or am I going to step in, give in, perhaps be subservient or acquiesce to other people just to maintain the peace that I'm seeking, which is the lower expressions of Libra that we are all being called to release. No, you stand in your own light and ask yourself, is this true for me at this time? Is this where I want to continue going? Do I want to continue playing this with other people? Because ultimately we're being asked to stand in our power and our individuality and assert what it is we need. Throat chakra and solar plexus chakra activations are happening right now. They're activating our sense of inner power, self-confidence, self-esteem, and feeling the perhaps inner drive within us to do what we feel is right for ourselves. Same thing with our throat, communicating, asserting ourselves verbally and letting people know that's not okay or thank you, or expressing, this is my boundary, or this is what I need in this relationship or in this particular situation. Next, confidence, self-worth, and courage are other elements coming through as we continue to transform through the different healing processes we have been going through, collectively and also individually. We are learning to stand in our truth, our power, our light, and not be afraid of that. Remember, Aries is exalted, or I should say the sun is exalted in Aries. So we're learning to show up for ourselves in new ways that doesn't diminish who we are. 
that doesn't let other people treat us in certain ways. We're allowing ourselves to be seen in new ways too and stepping into these spaces and perhaps identity shifts with fear. Because Aries, even though it has this momentous inertia to do things, to keep going, to try new things, and to perhaps enact some sort of bravery, that doesn't mean that there's no fear. So there could be a lot of discomfort and fear coming up right now as you navigate or wobble between these spaces that you're leaving, you're not yet entering, and you're still resolving, perhaps thinking, reflecting, meandering through. We're also figuring out who are we right now. That can be hard, especially if you are in a time or experiencing a time of uncertainty, nav uh, not navigation, uncertainty, change, or some type of in-between. Sometimes our identities, which are very fluid, may not have any particular label at this time. We're just transient. We're also learning who are we with or without XYZ, certain people, titles, degrees, professions, jobs, environments, possessions, home, a whole gamut of shit. Who are we and who are we not? Because if you ever noticed, especially if you are familiar with tarot, the full card, zero, the first card of the tarot deck of the journey, you never see someone with a shitload of luggage. <laughs> that archetype of the youth has usually a little backpack. So there's a lot of literally unpacking we're doing and releasing and we're letting go of a lot of baggage, energetic and physical baggage right now from the past and what is already done. It's over, it's expired. Kind of like when a library book is due and it's usually you'll get some type of notice, but you know, oh crap, it has to be turned in. All of us are releasing and being asked to turn in things to the universe that it's done. We're also learning to accept love and own all parts of ourselves. And we're doing it in ways that empower us, that allow us to embody our true nature, and that allow us to accept our quirks, our, our uh, differences, and also our unique energetic imprints that make us who we are. That's the youthful Mars, Mars energy. We're also seeking new supportive, nurturing ways of being in relationships, communities, homes, and environments, especially with the moon involved here and the sun with Chiron. We heal and thrive in safe places. And I feel like so many folks are realizing if this environment or people or group or community does not support who I am, it's time to move on. And there's fluctuatings and I see a lot of folks actually moving on from different spaces, whether it's a home, a career, a job, even relationships right now and old ways of being that don't support where it is that they want to go. We're also letting go of who or what doesn't lend to this support. So there's a lot of different themes, primarily with self and others that are coming up with this lunation in particular the eclipse energy. And I want to provide a quick example with Netflix's mini series, The Maid. I think it was a limited series and some of you may be familiar. Alex is a single mom trying to survive and build a better life while working as a maid. And I have notes here, otherwise I will go on tangent and we're going to be here forever. <laughs> she deals with dysfunctional parents, an alcoholic ex, folks who try to manipulate her one way or another, people that are just assholes to her. And she deals with a lot of what I call life insecurity. In other words, home insecurity. She experiences homelessness, food insecurity, and also financial insecurity. She's trying to make ends meet as a single mom with very little education. She got her GED and she ends up working as a maid that barely pays anything. I think it was like $10 an hour US. She is stuck in repeating cycles and we see this play out over the series. I highly recommend you watch this. I don't get anything out of it, but it really, I feel, depicts the Aries Libra energy very well because at the end, there's a final experience and several things that just start bumping up towards one another. And it's almost like her own Mars-Saturn experience, perhaps you can say, where she's like, I can't do this. She goes almost into a numb, perhaps disassociated state. And when she finally comes to and recognizes what's happening, she realizes that something has to happen. A change needs to be made. And those feelings that rise up above her 
a lot of anger, a lot of hurt, so much more fuel her into fuel her into action. So she makes changes and stops putting up with this BS. And it's just a general great depiction. I'm not going to give any more details for folks that want to watch. Ultimately, this lunation is also to asking us and highlighting that it's time we take responsibility for our lives, especially in the Aries energy area of our lives. I keep saying energy. In order to continue healing, evolving, and not repeating cycles, this is key. Because we ourselves, once we become aware of something, we have an option, we have a choice if we want to experience that again or we want to continue evolving. And a lot of times we try to make people come with us and that could be a lower octave or expression of Libra, trying to bring people with us for so many reasons because we're seeing some type of ideal or romanticized version or we have some type of expectation in our heads, this is going to change, this is going to work out. I know if we do X, Y, Z, things are going to get better. But the past offers us so many clues about how that particular situation will evolve. And the only thing you can continue doing is working on yourself, honoring who you are and going forward. Two, this second theme focuses on deep introspection around self-expression. I'm going to keep this short. This really relates to the Mercury retrograde transit we are experiencing right now. A lot of us are being asked to really reflect inward on mercurial themes, especially relating to self-expression, communication with others. It could be connecting with others, taking action impulsively or over committing on things we said yes to. So at this moment, you may be thinking, oh crap, I said yes to doing this project and now I don't have the bandwidth or I'm burning out because Aries can have the tendency to burn out because it's a cardinal tropical sign. It takes the initiative and has the potential to say yes to too many things and start things. And that's why some things can be left undone. So this is the time, I would say from April 1st was, was when Mercury stationed direct until about the middle of April. It's about the third week into April, plus the shadow period. For most of April into the first week of May or so, we are going to be doing a lot of reflecting and trying to gain clarity on what it is that we want to move into, take action on, drop, and potentially cut out. Remember, Aries is ruled by Mars. And the fool, the young person on that journey in the tarot card, travels light. So there is a lot of energy here on big time releasing with the south node in opposition to all of these energies right now. There's a lot of acceleration to move forward, so just be really cautious right now not to make any impulsive decisions or moves, anything hasty. This is a great time to pause and to actually think and sit with any decisions, anything that you need to change, anything that you need to edit, anything that you need to carefully redo. And if you're seeing things that are not helping you or supporting you right now and you're like, I need to take care of myself, especially with the eclipse energies, in energies. I don't know if you guys have felt it. Comment down below. What have you been feeling? Because this has had me in the last several weeks completely wiped. I'm exhausted. I'm tired, which is why I'm doing a shorter video. <laughs> I'm really tired right now. And I've been trying to focus on getting a lot of rest. And I encourage all of you as well. We're also up leveling our ways of communicating here, learning how to assert ourselves, practicing working on our boundaries, saying no and meaning it, saying yes and also meaning that. We're also realizing where we have been perhaps too ambitious or wanting to take on too much too soon. The third theme related to this eclipse has to do with spiritual truth, acceptance, and dissolution. So Mars is floating around and meandering in Pisces right now. And it's conjunct Saturn. Mars is at 13 degrees, Saturn is at 14 degrees, so it's within one degree. So remember, Mars rules Aries, but it can't see its home because it's in the version right now. Pisces is right next door to Aries, so it doesn't know what's going on right now. So we are tapping in right now to a completely different frequency that Mars is in. Our psychic and intuitive abilities are probably amplified. Many of you are probably getting a shit ton of messages a lot of creative inspiration happening. We're being asked as well to tap into our truth 
and to align to what feels good and right for us at this time. Mars is also a double-bodied feminine sign, so there's a lot of fluctuation and things that are shifting right now. Nothing is constant, which is why a lot of these energies are not about taking decisive action. With Mercury in retrograde and also with Mars in Pisces, it's a time to feel into what is going on, to receive, right? This feminine energy of Pisces is about being receptive or receiving this information. A lot of emotions coming up right now. Many people are crying and Mars, it could be explosive tears, a lot of tears happening. Almost like peeing, you're just turning on the faucet and it's waterworks, things are coming out. Same thing with anger or wanting to get that energy out through like exercise. What are those exercises called? Cardio hit, intense exercise or something intense that allows you to get that out. We are also maybe realizing like where the hell are we going at this time because we may not know. And that's happening, I feel, on purpose with the way things are going because we don't know yet. We're feeling into what is happening and we're getting messages around that. So your psychic antenna are, are on alert right now with Mars here because you're receiving a lot of downloads and insights and that those are going to provide the keys when Mercury turns retro station, excuse me, when Mercury stations retrograde and as we ease out of the eclipse we're, season, we're going to see a lot more and I'm having so much difficulty articulating my words right now. Mars and Saturn are also going to form a conjunction. So a lot, again, this really emphasizes more emotional frustrations, anger, outbursts, conflict, separation, and I feel, and I want to say this because Mars and Saturn are both malefics, but Mars and Saturn have very different energies. Mars is about taking action, courage, assertiveness, moving forward, it's our vitality. Saturn is about hard work, limitations, patience, responsibility, and discipline. So I kept seeing a lot of cutting cords, maybe energetic first, dissolving contracts, realizing what cannot be salvaged because you may be having for the 20th time the same type of shit or disagreement come up in your relationship, in a situation, you're realizing this isn't going to work. This is also another opportunity to see if you can use healthier ways of communicating to make that work. But you're going to know whether or not this is something that's feasible. So letting go with acceptance here and navigating with inner peace while feeling things emotionally or in a somatic way is going to be key. And I kept hearing Cindy Lauper's time after time song throughout this entire part that I just mentioned and discussed, I kept hearing that song. So there's a deep reflection going on right now about times, who we are, perhaps navigating back 19 years to the previous Aries, Libra, eclip eclipses, and also the nodal transits, who we were then, which are very vastly different. The fourth theme revolves around profound reno renovation of all relationships, values, and pleasure. And this is something that's going to continue evolving because we have Pluto and Aquarius at one degree right now, and it forms a superior and separating sextile with Venus in Aries at four degrees. So obviously Pluto's the slower moving planet. It's going to be in Aquarius eventually for the next 20 or so years as of November, right? Because right now we're seeing a greater extension of Pluto in Aquarius until around September, October in the fall when it goes back into Capricorn retrograde and then it'll shift permanently back into Aquarius. So Pluto has a greater impact here on these Venusian mundane qualities. So we may be feeling already the start. I would say the tip of the iceberg where we're like, my values are changing around the types of people I want to connect to, around the types of people you want to maybe share your time and energy with or who you're wanting to collaborate or love or become friends with. And in general, how you find pleasure and joy and who and what brings harmony into your life. Because we can do these in these Libran ways and higher expressions while still going forward in that Aries energy towards our own individuality, towards our, our own autonomous expression while protecting and safeguarding our sovereignty, but also saying, you know what, I can still do relationships in healthier ways and still allow other people in my bubble still allow myself to connect, but in a different way. And Pluto is transforming that big time. So I feel like there's going to be a return to more authentic, 
true deep forms of love here, intellectual stimulation. Many folks are connecting in different bandwidths because they've grown, they've healed, they've expanded. So don't be surprised if you haven't already, let me know in the comments below if you've been, if you've started to meet new people that are perhaps very different than the types of folks you've met before, or you're getting to know people that are very like-minded, people that mirror your life, people that may have very resonant or similar themes, and you're like, wow, this is like a, maybe a doppelganger or a twin out there. When Mercury stations direct towards the end of April, we are going to have a greater sense of clarity here, illumination, more certainty, I would say more resolute assertiveness, and obviously more inertia to start taking things forward. But then we will shift into Taurus season uh, pretty soon, about the middle of April. So we're going to ground a lot of this in a different way, in more Venusian ways, which I think is going to help as we ease into some of these changes and slow down a little bit. You guys, I hope this has helped. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this format. Yay, nay. I always value feedback. Even if you give me a thumbs down, which I have received, it doesn't bug me, but just let me know. What can I do to improve? Was it something I've said or was it some type of formatting? Let me know. That's the only way that I'll know so I can improve. And I really appreciate all of you that have engaged, it is the best way to help my channel. Give it a thumbs up if this has helped you. If you've enjoyed this content, let me know. Put, a, put an emoji. <laughs> Thank you, anything. It really, really helps my channel. And I'm just truly grateful and I appreciate you. We are going to go into each sign. And I have the chart here. I have no notes here. And I want to just give something general because I feel like with this solar eclipse, you're going to get a lot of unexpected surprises, opportunities, blessings, and changes. And remember, with every type of beginning, there's going to be ending, endings, right? So if you're starting an amazing new job, but you don't know it yet, and your job lays you off, you may not realize it. And then shortly after, you're going to receive something different. So just keep that in mind with any type of change, right? Something has to end before it starts, and that's the cycle that we go on. Okay, guys, quick note, I'm intuitive with astrology, and I use tropical Western astrology with Hellenistic techniques as well. So I use whole sign house systems, so just know that. So rising sign is the best way if you're listening to this because I'm looking at your ascendant, which is naturally in the first house. So if you have your sun or moon, in that sign, it may not be in the first house, but you could glean some general applicabilities with what I discuss. Okay, Aries, this eclipse is happening in your first house. You guys, the lunar Libra eclipse video that I did with also delineations for each sign, it's going to be opposite of that. <laughs> so you're going to find a lot of similarities on these themes. Aries, this eclipse is about you. Your identity is shifting big time. Some of you are also experiencing nodal returns at this time. Some of you have been breaking away from so many different things. I see here your relationships have changed profoundly and you have changed the way that you have related to your love with Venus here in your first house. Your appearance, the way you look, your style, the way you define yourself, how you express yourself, how you identify may be shifting at this time. With Aries, in the sign of Aries ruled by Mars, you may be changing things up in ways that allow you to be seen in different, perhaps new profound ways to be noticed, taking leadership positions, going out there and making things happen. Feel too with career, especially with the sun here, conjunct the moon. There could be changes in your money and your job, what you do. Some of you may be moving as well, but I feel generally you all, because you're Seventh house is ruled by Libra and we have the South node. Many of you are letting go of relationships that don't support who you are now because you've changed and will be changing. This isn't just, okay, you're, you're changing and you're done on the solar eclipse. This is an evolution. So many of you may have seen a lot of people leave or will be leaving your life. Some of you may be separating from all different types of relationships, romantic and platonic. I also feel like you're learning to own who you are in relationships and not, not just always, it's not even the word compromise, maybe acquiesce or 
you know when you walk on um, eggshells around people? I kept seeing that. So some of you are learning to maintain your power and identity and who you are or will be learning that in relationships, which is what is happening, which is what is happening here. Similar to the Libras with the lunar eclipse, letting go of an old identity. I hope this helped. Let's move on to Tauruses. I'm going to drink, guys. Okay, Taurus risings. This eclipse is happening in your 12th house. And of course, apologies for my dog right now. So the 12th house focuses on the unconscious. It could be more isolating places like prisons, hospitals, solitude. It could also deal with working on mental health or therapy, psychological issues, and spirituality in general. Also accidents, illness, sickness as well. So some of you, this eclipse is offering many I'll say first, healing, major healing coming in when it comes to mental health issues. It could be your physical body. because We have the sun and moon here, which could represent both. It could be healing of folks close to you. I mean, it could be mother, father, mother figures, father figures, people around you. But I feel like you're also exploring new modalities to heal yourself and also perhaps connecting to new sources of regimens like workouts different modalities that are going to support your energy strong focus here too on your spirituality in the 12th house some of you may be feeling a greater need to be alone and with aries i feel this supports it because you may be navigating new pathways new interests almost like you found a comfy spot in the library by yourself in the corner in the chair and you're like this is great and really honing in on what your beliefs are, what are your practices that help support what you need healing in or what you would like connection in. You may be exploring also different forms of divination, maybe psychology, different elements of spirituality since it's broad. I sense overall healing happening, questioning and releasing to a certain belief system because the South Node is in the sixth house. So there could be letting go of belief systems about work. Could be servitude, hard work, and what that means. Also, some of you have small pets that may be uh, shifting in their years. They could be getting older here. But I also feel generally there's a change here on your larger spiritual beliefs on what it is if that is meaningful to you, that is going to extend and parlay to the sixth house in Libra, especially when it comes to other people. Some of you are generally uh, carving out a practice right now, which is going to support you, especially when the nodes shift into Pisces in your 11th house. You're almost getting prepared as you shift into that network. I hope this helped my Tauruses. Okay, let's move on to Gemini. Gemini Risings, the Aries solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of network, social groups and communities, activism, your patrons, allies, benefactors, people that uplift you and support you with your dreams, goals, desires. So I see a whole influx of new people. Some of you have shifted what it is that you have previously found pleasure or joy in with the Libra South Node. In the fifth house, some of you have been changing the types of things that you've connected to or related to, especially with Venusian themes. And some, the same thing with dating. Some of you may have broken up with people, are leaving certain relationships, are changing up the way that you date. All of that may be in complete influx right now. But with the 11th house uh, focusing here, I feel like new souls are coming in and also there's a deeper uh, perhaps bonding or connection happening with those that are existing in your connection right now i feel like there's an expansive energy because we have the fifth house we have venus opposing the fifth house and she has her join the fifth house and she's opposite right in libra and so i feel like many of you are also going to find renewed interest or new interests 
through perhaps other women, but we have all genders here, through other uh, connections that come forth with this lunation and new possibilities that help awaken and support those fifth house energies when the nodes shift. Because I feel like they're obviously intertwined here. And right now the people are shifting in your own network and they're going to help move you into the next phase because it'll be when Pisces goes into, excuse me, when the nodes go into the into Pisces, it'll be shifting into the 10th house. So this is like a preparation right now where many of you are reshuffling, reorganizing your 11th house for that. I hope this has helped my Geminis. Let's go on to my Cancers. Cancer Risings. This eclipse is happening in your 10th house of career, reputation, legacy, visibility in the world, and how you want to be seen. This could also be your art of your main point of action or what it is that you're currently doing, whether it's working, caretaking, you're retired, you're volunteering, whatever it is. This is your main job. It could be student as well. I feel like many of you are either several things going on, new jobs for many cancers, new jobs, or you're going to up level in the job that you're in. Think promotions, greater responsibilities with the moon could lead to greater money. <laughs> I'm like, what is it called? Some of you may be looking for careers or jobs that are offering greater compensation for your value, for your time, especially around Venusian themes. A lot of focus on here, like wealth and wanting expansion here. Some of you are also maybe uh, establishing your own businesses, doing freelance or entrepreneurship, especially with Aries in the 10th house. There's a leadership embodiment here. Some of you may be going up into leadership positions, again, promotions like C-suite level positions, managerial, lead, supervisor, that kind of thing, or really taking out that energy on your own and saying, okay, see, ya, I'm creating my own business. I definitely see that happening. I also see moves happening because we have the South node in Libra. So some of you may be changing your home environment as well. As a result, you may be moving for a career or a job or whatever it is that you are currently doing. You may be moving homes and shifting those people in them. People moving in and out. Maybe you're leaving roommates. Maybe you're leaving family. Maybe you're moving out of home for the first time or you're moving in with family. A lot of changes on this axis. Thank you, my Cancers. Let's go on to my Leos. Okay. I have to click each one. <laughs> my Leos. So this eclipse is happening in your ninth house of higher learning, intelligence, wisdom, spirituality, religion, all forms of mysticism, divination, occult, astrology, foreign travel, or long-distance travel from your home. Wow. <laughs> some of you may be returning back to school or back to some type of higher learning, higher knowledge, whether it's a course, something deep, something that entails learning over a period of time, maybe study abroad as well. I also feel like some of you, I kept getting this, this is intuitive. Some of you may be taking time off, sabbatical. I also feel like there's a pilgrimage energy here. Some of you may be taking time, like solo independent study. Uh, what are they called? Silent retreats. Focusing on your relationship to your belief systems and what it is that you want to do because your beliefs guide a lot of your goals and ambitions and drive in the world. I also feel like some of you, this also, this house, the ninth house also covers the area of publishing and broadcasting. So some of you may be working on creative endeavors with the sun and the moon here, books. You could be actually doing a tour of some type because the sun in Aries, it's exalted here and the sun, has its joy in the ninth house. This is the house of God. So some of you may be experiencing a deeply trans spiritual transformative time of reflection, of learning, 
perhaps connecting to a mentor. The sun can represent some type of teacher, mentor, leader of some sort. But I also feel like fame being visible, known in some way. So for those of you that are publishing, writing, teaching of any kind, this could be a time where you are also noticed or you will have opportunities to be noticed. For I feel like so many signs or so many, there's just collective energy right now on meeting potential soul partners, platonic and romantic, like kindred spirits for those looking romantic partners. Some of you may meet them on these expeditions. You may meet people from other cultures in your local area, or you may meet people from other cultures, but even people of your same cultures far away from home. So just keep an eye out. <laughs> I hope this has helped my Leos. Okay, my Virgos. This lunation and eclipse is highlighting your eighth house. This is the eighth house of fears, loss, debts, shared resources, especially with a significant other or a spouse or other people's money, inheritances and investments. Here, I feel like many of you may be guided towards or feeling that energy towards resolving deep fears, psychological fears, anxieties, especially around traumas, it could be betrayal, self-esteem, it could be traumas relating to change, to death, transformation, also relating to money in general, since it's on the axis, eighth and second house axis, relating to fears of instability. And here with Aries, there's an energy of relying on yourself, but also on others and taking the charge here forward. So it's almost like braving the fear, which sounds ironic. And I feel like many of you are going to go into this perhaps on your own and maybe have already been working on this. I feel I keep getting like roots being plucked. So therapy, healing modalities. There could be points too with this Aries energy and the sun here, a major healing happening that come up in alternative modalities. Some of you may also be exploring perhaps like astrology, even though this house in Hellenistic astrology is not one of the occult, but in modern interpretations it is. Oftentimes many folks start connecting to different forms of healing and simply understanding yourself because this is a house that may present many unknowns because of the fluctuations in the nature of the house itself. But in Aries, I feel like you're going to put a lot of energy into resolving this. I get major healing happening here. If any of you have been experiencing themes around financial instability, fears around general stability, like emotional, especially with another, because the eighth house also brings up themes around emotional intimacy, emotional connection. You know, when you have to open up your heart with another, because this is emerging, like other people's resources and receiving things. These could be also two where you have like class action lawsuits. And I say that because I have a current transit right now, not the nodal points. I have Uranus and Jupiter, but you know those class action lawsuits, especially in the US, if you live here, where if you purchased chicken like 10 years ago, you may get it in email or whatever it is, fruits, so many things, a phone, and there was something defective and they let you know and you could be part of that class action lawsuit. Things like that could come up and you may experience unexpected sources of income, investments, and money that comes through to you from other people. So there's a lot of things coming up, but it's almost like the unknown what's happening here. So many different themes. I hope this helped, Virgo. My Libras. Okay, this eclipse is activating your seventh house of partnerships, relationships, spouse, marriage, other people, contracts, lawsuits, hidden or actually open enemies here, <laughs> comma to pleasures. This is a house of pleasures and where the sun sets. And so again, similar to Aries, you guys are the other, because you're on the other axis, you're the other major player in this eclipse, like Aries was with the Libra lunar eclipse. So 
Aries is in your seventh house. So this is about new relationships, new people coming in. Fresh new people, I would say, especially since Libras, you are releasing an old way of being, an old way of identifying. Comment down below, what have you been experiencing? Some of you have been releasing a lot, purging different belief systems, who you were, what you look like, different ways of existing, literally roles that you've played. Some of you are shifting from singlehood to maybe marriage or partnering up. Others are doing the opposite. Some of you are becoming parents. Some of you, you never unbecome a parent, but maybe you're becoming an empty nester and your kids have left the home. That's a huge transition. Some of you are leaving the workforce. A lot of transitions here, but as a result, we're going to get a whole fresh boatload of energies coming here. A lot of new destined and faded soul connections here. I also feel like too, this eclipse is also giving you guys a different, uh, perhaps push, courage to meet people in new places. With the Aries energy, it's, it's the opposite. And I also have this, I'm a Libra writing, so I get it. <laughs> Some of you are taking more of, and this is cardinal energy as well, you're taking an initiative to connect to people in different ways in new places. It's not the same place. So you may be meeting new people as a result. And so taking that initiative is going to allow you to meet people and to see, do I want to continue this or not? Like many of the other signs, like I've said, there's a relationship energy for a lot of folks. Because of the sun and the moon in here in conjunct, a lot of new relationships are possible at this time. Romantic, platonic. I see some of you will be partnering up for your profession if you have your own business or in your career. Same thing for those of you that own your business. Seventh house is the house of clients as well. So you may be getting a lot of new clients here that maybe are ambitious, leaders, driven with the Aries archetype. I hope this has helped my Libras. Let's move on to my Scorpio risings. This eclipse is activating your sixth house of work, labor, servitude. This is also a house of illness. Some say daily routines, that's more modern. Daily routines in Hellenistic astrology it tends to be ascribed to the third house but I'll leave it up to you. This is also generally pertaining to your health in so much as it refers to any illnesses that come up. It could be also to some mental health condition and small pets. So with the eclipse activating this area, some of you may be getting new jobs. You could also be leaving jobs as a result. Remember endings and new beginnings here. Some of you may be getting new pets pets that are easy to take care of, maybe that take care of themselves with the ener Aries energy. I also feel like some of you may be cleaning up or taking time to heal or to focus on your health in a new invigorated way. Like you may be enacting new ways or new systems or what are they called? Regi regimens, routines of health, new workouts. And that could also include new ways of eating. If you include your daily routines, there's an energy here, complete revision of injecting something new and different to support your healing. Because you have the South Node in the 12th house. So you may be releasing a lot of outdated beliefs, a lot of fears as well. I feel like past life traumas here. Uh, any karmic debt or load that may have affected the sixth house because these are malefic houses. And I feel like that's expanding your opportunity to find what it is that you want. Especially the spiritual practice. Some of you are reformulating that big time. And that really helps support where it is you go and what it is that you want to do, especially with work that you may want to uh, pursue, you want to apply to or even things that you're taking care of because the sixth house can include day-to-day -day arduous tasks that are not always fun. Think of like cleaning, ser uh, I was gonna say servitude, cleaning, uh, paperwork, those minor logistics which add up but may seem cumbersome. Thank you so much, my Scorpios, my Sages. Let's take a look and see where this eclipse is activating or what it is 
where is it? I'm looking at the chart and I'm seeing everything together. Sagittarius, this eclipse is activating your fifth house of sex, sexuality, romance, pleasures, joys, gambling, hopefully safe gambling, children. And so some of you are going to get new creative births, endeavors coming up here or wanting to take on or learn something new. I can definitely see that happening, especially with the Aries energy. Some of you are going to start new ways of, of relating to maybe a creative endeavor or a hobby, doing something that's different or puts you out there or something that allows you to take the leadership on. Maybe you're going to be training or showing others in a pastime or pleasure or pursuit that you really enjoy. I also feel like some of you may start, if you haven't, may start to mingle or start getting interested or back into dating and romance because this is heating up with the Aries energy. It's a fire sign. It's a cardinal sign. So even though you may have your own beliefs about who asks out who first, this is a great time to take the initiative and because Venus is in her joy here in the fifth house to ask people out. It could also be just friendships, but because this is the house of sex, romance, and the beginnings of that love that you may want to nurture later on, great time to take the initiatives and be bold. <laughs> be fearless here. You're also nurturing what it is that, you, that brings you pleasure and joy. And there's a healthy risk of, there's a healthy, I would say, um, what's, the, what's the word? It's a good time. There's a healthy... It's a healthy time to take some risks as you feel, right? If they feel good for you. I also feel like if any of you are interested in having children, you can birth something creative, like a project, a potential book that is in the beginning stages, etc. Or literally a good time to have children if that is what you want. Because Aries is a fire element. Fire is about creation and therefore birth. So there's a lot of supportive energy here. Thank you, my Sages. Let's continue on to my Capricorn risings. This eclipse is activating your fourth house of home, roots, ancestry, family, real estate, and also different forms of divination, occult. So some of you are moving homes, especially with Aries here. Some of you may be moving out. A lot of, I just get moving. Some of you could be redecorating your home or changing things up, right? New furniture. But with the moon here as well, I feel like many of you are going to be thinking about moving over the next year or so. Shifting what it is you do and it pings on your 10th house axis here. So some of you could be moving for a job as a result or relocating. Some of you may be leaving family, <clears throat> excuse me, or shifting who is in your family system. If you're, because we have sun and moon, some of you may be leaving your parents' home or leaving home. You're, you're growing up and you're moving out to, to go to a job or a career or school. Some of you are also expanding your family. I'm getting expansion like, what is it called? Having babies, <laughs> but creating a larger family, expanding it in some way. You could be moving in with other relatives or simply thinking of expanding. There's also with Venus here, many of you may be redecorating. Complete redecoration, like renovation. It could be interior design with Venus here. And I also feel like you're redoing where it is you live to fit who it is that you are now. Especially since we have Pluto and Aquarius in the second house, uh, sextiling Venus in the fourth. Okay. My Capricorn, thank you. My Aquariuses or Aquarians, <laughs> this eclipse is activating your third house of your local neighborhood, day-to-day -day routine, siblings, relatives, communication, early education, but general learning as well. This is also the house uh, that deals with es esoteric topics too, astrology, divination, etc. 
So this is a greater focus for you all, my Aquarians. Maybe you're getting to know your local neighborhood. Maybe you've moved recently or you haven't really had the time, but there could be a greater focus of uh, making yourself known in some way, especially with the Aries energy. Some of you may be wanting to volunteer in different capacities in the community, like get more involved in the community through volunteer efforts or leading some type of initiative. I see also the moon is in her joy here in the third house. This is the house of the goddess. So some of you could be moving or relocating to a smaller, more intimate community or getting to know your neighbors more because I see expansion of friendships and people in your local community. Also, if for any of you that may work in these areas, like your job may pertain to uh, local community events, speaking, teaching. I also see that happening here. Some of you may be creating something new that helps connect to other groups like podcasts or doing workshops or educating in some way or teaching. I see here too, there's a potential. I mean, this is like the theme with everyone. For those of you that are interested in these third house topics that I've mentioned, I keep getting blog, like YouTube, social media, uh, podcasting, writing. There's opportunities here that could open up with making money, maybe like doing freelance work, creating a potential side hustle or a business. I see that happening here. My Aquarius says, thank you so much. And finally, my Pisces, this eclipse is happening in your second house of income, self-worth, values, finances, wealth. I also wait what it is that you do, material possessions as well. Some of you are activating, creating a new source of income. This could also include entrepreneurship, stepping it up as a leader. Some of you are getting promoted or want to apply for a higher level position, and that's going to increase your income as a result. Changes here in material fortune, especially with Venus and the moon, but with the sun, some of you are changing careers, which is going to increase your income. I see that with Aries. It's going to change your income. And because you have the south node in the eighth house, some of you may be separating from others maybe separations, divorces, moving out, or splitting of your material assets or divisions of that nature. And so your income is going to shift onto you because there's a self-reliance energy here. So some of you may be starting or entering the workforce after some time or simply starting something new that's going to allow you to create your own income stream. Some of you potentially may get an inheritance or some form of money from someone else, like a settlement of some type that's going to support what it is you want to do. I keep hearing fledgling, like going off on your own, like starting some type of business or venture or entrepreneurship, doing something completely different that you did before. And with Venus here, Again, you've got several of these. It's going to depend largely on the aspects in your chart. These are just broad significations that I'm detailing to you. But with Venus in Aries, right, she's not exactly comfortable in here. <laughs> and she is in her fall here in Aries. But I feel like there's an expansion opportunity in whatever that you want to pursue for wealth as you define it. we got the moon again, Venus, your second house in Aries. So if any of you have a creative endeavor that's coming through, which has nothing to do with second house, something that you have been really feeling the, the pull to do, to create, especially since Pisces, you're ruled by Jupiter. Take a look at where Jupiter is in your natal chart. That can give you insights on what it is to potentially tap into or create that's going to bring in income because I feel like if you're creating an additional income stream or wanting to look for a job, that's going to be key. You all, I hope this has helped and offered some type of glimpse. Remember, this is an eclipse just like the lunar Libra eclipse. This new moon total solar eclipse 
there's what is it called like a potpourri a mixed bag a wild card energy here so these are just general delineations very very general i should say lean into faith lean into practices that support and nurture you make you feel safe i created a playlist of some eclipse videos that can offer you guidelines some things you may be feeling like symptoms and also take a look at the lunar eclipse and libra video because you're going to get also more ideas of themes that are developing throughout this nodal transit of aries and libra happening right now you guys i'm wishing you a beautiful and safe eclipse in aries wherever you are in the world always take care of yourself if this has helped you in any way don't forget to hit the thumbs up button that's the best way to support me i am truly grateful for you thank you for being on this journey with me lots of love to you i'll see you soon take care